Hey everyone, Aaron from Aaron's Co. here, showing you how to assemble your brand new deluxe series Aaron Snow Throw. If you purchase your snow throw online through a national retail chain store this season, it could show up in your driveway like this, the same crate we boxed it up in at our factory in Brilliant, Wisconsin. And though I'm certain the thought of some assembly required isn't the most appealing to you, I'm here to walk you through the easy step-by-step -step assembly procedure. Trust me, if I can do this, so can you. So as long as you have your gloves and your safety goggles ready, let's begin. Open the crate top carefully so you don't cut yourself on the staples keeping the box tops closed. Then remove the staples from the crate top and remove the supports from the top of the crate. Locate the setup guide that's either in the envelope adhered to the discharge chute or inside the chute. Each snow throw comes with a pictorial assembly guide that can be referenced when assembling this unit. These instructions are a duplicate of the material we're covering in this video. You'll notice the setup guide calls out a few tools. For this procedure, you'll need a socket wrench, a 3 8 inch socket, a 7 16 inch socket, a 1 half inch deep socket, a 9 16 inch socket, a needle nose pliers, and a cutting tool. Remove the discharge chute and the chute rotation rod and set both parts aside. If you see the literature pack loose in the crate and not hanging off the handlebars, you can set it aside for now. The literature pack contains the operator's manual, engine manual, and other important resources. Remove the cleanout tool from the housing, then remove the cardboard insert from on top of the housing and reinstall the cleanout tool into its holder. Then continue removing the inserts from the crate. Cut the crate's corners so its walls collapse and remove the walls from the base to reduce the tripping hazard and to give yourself easier access to the unit. If the literature pack was loose in the box, wrap it around the handlebars as shown here. Remove the hardware sets that are only through the upper handlebars and set them aside. Loosen, but do not remove the hardware retaining the upper handlebar assembly to the lower handlebars. Also loosen the shift rod hardware. Remove the wrapping from around the hand grips. The clutch levers will spring back when the wrapping is removed. Move the shift lever, that's the lever farthest to the right, into its rearmost detent. Slowly rotate the handlebar assembly into the upright position while making sure the shift rods don't bind. Install the bolts removed earlier through the lower handlebar holes and install the spacers and locking nuts onto the bolts. Once all hardware has been reinstalled, tighten all hardware sets and ensure the handlebar assembly is secure. Align the upper shift rod with the lower shift rod hardware set and tighten the shift rod hardware.
remove the hardware set retaining the skid shoes to the discharge chute mounting bracket and set all parts aside. Then remove the other hardware set from the chute mounting bracket. Install the chute over the base and align the pedestal with the mounting bracket. Insert one of the hardware sets through the P-clamp on the chute cable and secure it to the top mounting holes. Then reinstall the lower hardware set, but finger tighten the hardware only. At this point we want the chute to remain loose. Remove the tapping screw retaining the gear cover to the chute pedestal and remove the cover. Remove the spring clip from the chute gear hub. This is easiest by pushing on the end of the spring clip with the needle nose pliers. Peel back the plastic on the control panel and carefully insert the short end of the chute rotation rod through the control panel and into the bushing under the panel. Then insert the long end of the chute rod into the chute gear hub, align the holes in the rod with the holes in the hub, and reinstall the spring clip. Reinstall the chute gear cover and secure it to the chute pedestal with its original screw. Now we can tighten the chute hardware. Ensure the chute cable is routed on the left side of the chute gears and adjust the cable so the white mark is just above the P-clamp. Then route the cable through the P-clamp on the engine base and close the clamp with the pliers, but don't close it so tightly that it restricts the cable movement. Move the chute deflector lever to the rearmost detent on the dash panel. Remove the hairpin and the bushing from the deflector lever under the dash. Route the chute deflector cable over the lower handlebars, pull the rubber boot away from the cable anchor, insert the anchor into the anchor bracket, and install the cable eyelet onto the deflector lever. Reposition the rubber boot against the cable anchor and reinstall the bushing and the hairpin removed earlier. Check the function of the chute rotation rod and the chute deflector lever. Remove the auger gear case fill plug and check that the gear case has oil. Gear case oil is dark red and should appear on the bottom of the plug. If no gear case oil is present, set this unit aside and contact Aaron's customer support. If oil is present in the gear case, reinstall the fill plug and tighten. Remove the hardware from the skid shoes. Push the handlebars down to move the unit off the crate pallet. The higher you raise the housing, the easier it is to move the unit off the pallet. Take one of the skid shoe bolts and check that it can fit through the holes in the scraper blade and the housing. If it doesn't fit, you'll need to adjust the scraper blade forward. If the bolt fits through the holes, advance to the 10 minute and 22 second mark in the video. To adjust the scraper blade, carefully tip the unit back onto its handlebars.
Loosen the scraper blade hardware, pull the scraper blade forward, and tighten the hardware. Rotate the unit back into its operating position, place a 1 8 inch thick spacer under each side of the housing, and install the skid shoes. Install the bolts from inside the housing, install the skid shoes onto the bolts, and install the washers with their rougher edges against the shoes. Spin the nuts onto the bolts, ensure the skid shoes are flat against the surface you are working on, and tighten the hardware. Install the remaining skid shoe on the other side of the unit. Once again, position the washers with their rougher edges against the skid shoe and ensure the shoe is flat against the surface you are working on before tightening the hardware. Remove the wrapping from the engine and the top of the housing and ensure the unit has a visually appealing presentation. Just leave the literature pack that's hanging off the handlebars. This contains the operator's manual and other resources for the customer. Remove the dipstick from the engine and verify the oil level is correct. The oil level should be between the markings on the dipstick, but if no oil is present or if the oil level is outside the markings on the dipstick, do not start the engine and contact the retailer where you purchased your unit from. If you're assembling the Deluxe 30 EFI model, locate the battery charger supplied in the unit's literature pack and charge the EFI battery according to the instructions in the operator's manual. Once the battery is charged, connect the battery to the unit's wire harness. See, I told you that was going to be easy. Now before you start throwing snow, do a final walk around of your product. If you notice any quality issues like damage or missing parts, contact the retailer where you purchased your unit from for replacements. But if your snow throw was everything you expected, register your new unit at errands.com forward slash registration. For help registering your new product, find the product registration instructional video on the Errands YouTube channel. And finally, if you guys like this video and want to see more helpful content from Errands, click on the subscribe button to be notified whenever we share a new video that shows you how to service or use your Errands snow throw.